everyone and welcome to my channel Alan's Cloud. My name is Alan Samsel and today we're going to be talking about another hardware hack and specifically this is for the PetNet Generation 1 pet food dispensers. Uh, I've had one of these for a few years for my cats and I love this thing but recently the PetNet folks um, you know they haven't been able to keep their servers online and their uh, you know customer support has been nothing um, so, you know, a lot of people are really upset about this and, uh, you know, when it happened to me several weeks ago, I, th I thought, well, you know, let's, let's, uh, crack this thing open, uh, see what makes it tick and see what we can do about that. So I found two different methods, um, to be able to modify the internals of the pet net feeder so that you don't, uh, use the pet net servers and their app and aren't reliant on any of their stuff. So. Uh, and also to add insult to injury, the PetNet folks now want you to pay $30 a year on top of the already $100 plus that they charge for these uh, feeders to keep their customer service now going. Um, so I'm not willing to do that. Um, this fix, uh, this update, uh, if you will, does work. It's got some pros and some cons and we'll cover that as well. But if you're interested in uh, doing this to your pet net feeder and getting away from the pet net IO, you know, support folks and not paying their yearly fee, uh, stick around. This video is for you. So let's get right to it. Uh, I'm going to first start off by showing you what I'm talking about here. Um, so this is Amazon, of course. Uh, and what you're seeing here is the difference between a generation one feeder like I have, uh, where you've got the eject button and this is the, the food tray that pops out and they have all of their uh, internal electronics is basically in this plastic part down here at the bottom. This is the Gen 2. Uh, I don't have a Gen 2, so I haven't been able to crack one of those open, double check the wiring to make sure that this works. I, I think that the concept will still work, but I can't guarantee that the wiring and the things inside are exactly the same. So uh, until I can get my hands on one of those, uh, this is just for the Generation 1 folks, uh, unfortunately, but this is what they look like. Um, you know, they're, they're only selling both generations of these used here. Uh, but I, as far as, uh, searching online for them, I think I saw brand new ones at Walmart and they're still asking a, you know, a hundred dollars for these things. Um, there are some on eBay, so you can get them secondhand. So hopefully when PetNet goes to this, you know, model, I think it's unfortunate on their part. It's a, a bad move, but, um, you know, you should be supporting the, the customers that you already had that already paid for the product. Uh, but but in going that way, I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to going to be, you know, chucking these things out. You'll be able to find them online, uh, you know, should drive the price down on eBay because whatever it is you pay for it secondhand, I don't care how new it is or, you know, barely used. You're going to have to pay that yearly fee to activate it come here at the end of June. Um, that's when if you're not one of their new paying customers at the end of June, your basically your pet feeder stops working at that point. Um, so you can find these online, uh, but if you find it locally, you know, eBay, um, uh, Goodwill, more power to you. Uh, it's great. So uh, a little bit of the background, um, you know, back in uh, early April, the beginning of April is actually when mine went offline. Now I, I had, um, it didn't really affect my pets because I was actually watching the device at the time. I had just upgraded my Wi-Fi to a mesh network system that has both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz combined into one, um, you know, broadcasted name. I wasn't quite sure if the, you know, Internet of Things devices like this PetNet device were going to attach to that thing correctly. Some sometimes some of the older Wi-Fi generation devices don't know what to do with that, uh, you know, 2.5 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz simultaneously. Uh, so I was already watching out for this thing to make sure that it was, you know, doing the right thing because I had just done that upgrade. But, you know, the food wasn't coming out. Pets were following us around. My, my cats were really upset with us. Um, so it was very obvious that something was wrong. The ring on the device, uh, it, you know, is lit up and it basically tells you that it's connected to Wi-Fi. But, uh, you know, in trying to go to the app, you, you can't get through. It's a down for maintenance. There was, you know, uh, you just couldn't basically log in to check and change any of your settings in their, you know, servers uh, through their app. Uh, so you couldn't change the device. So that um, happened again early April, and it took them until April 13th to even put out this message that saying that 
you know, some of their devices, Gen 1 and Gen 2, are being affected. Um, and then, you know, this says here, April 14th uh, is the one. So the next day they say, hey, we're still experiencing this, this issue. And then their next update isn't for almost a month later. Um, you know, so, and this isn't the first time that their servers and their devices have gone down. This had happened last year for a shorter amount of time. But if you do some Googling, you'll, you'll find other Ars Technica, uh, I think, made an article about it. Uh, going down and how some of their users were really upset. So when this happened, um, you know, there was this chance that their servers were going to come back online. And that's basically what this June 10th message is, you know, saying that they resolved the issue, but basically they, they you know, blamed it all on COVID and, and sending people home. And it's, it's just a, a garbage excuse, um, you know, uh, for, for, I mean, they weren't responding to anybody. They didn't, you know, answer to anything. Um, so what I did at the time, and this is still up, and, and this is basically option one, on my blog, and I'll leave links down below to the blog uh, for this, you know, first version of the fix, uh, and then I'll, I'll give you guys, um, you know, pretty much all of the different items that you're going to need in order to do the upgrade, uh, this, this uh, more intense version that I'm talking about right now. Uh, not intense, but it's more in-depth, shall we say. But anyway, this first version of it, um, on, on the blog, it's uh, uh, from May 4th, how to get your PetNet IO feeder somewhat working again. Uh, here I go through it pretty much step by step, um, you know, which uh, board to buy. This is basically a Wi-Fi device that you power and that, um, you know, through the settings in the app, trips this relay and controls the device that you hook up, you know, to these posts here. Um, so the first version of the fix that that i had done was was i just i got this board the board's like 13.99 off of amazon i got some of these little clips so that i didn't have to mess with any of their internal wires um and and the, you know in this guide here i'm saying if you don't have extra wire which i happen to have you know here's another link to buy some 18 gauge wire um but these little clips in here uh, essentially you just snap them in place onto the existing wires and you can add this additional Wi-Fi board to the electronics that are already there uh, for the PetNet folks. Uh, because basically, again, I was betting that their services were going to come back online, uh, which they did eventually. Um, but in the meantime, I had my fix in place and I was able to set up a schedule and feed my cats. Um, you know, uh, like I had done previously, not exactly the same. Uh, and, and I'll get to that and the differences. Um, but, you know, so, so basically here in, in this, this uh, I go through how to set this up. And what you're doing is, is the device has a, a manual button on the front that when you hit it, it basically does one little churn of the motor and it spits out a snack for your pets, right? Well, all I did in the wiring and what this article goes through is basically it adds that wireless device in there uh, to remote manually hitting that button. I know it's odd because you can actually hit that button inside of the PetNet app, but again, that wasn't working. Um, so I remoted that manual button to this other wireless board and had settings so that it would hit it. Uh, but that it's, it's only a snack, so it's, it's not good enough to really feed the pets, um, you know, especially if you've got a bigger pet uh, that's going to need more food. Um, so you have to do more than one occasion so i had it go off at 6 30 and then at 6 32 so you know 6 30 was the snack and then another uh snack two minutes later that way there was enough for both pets to be able to because i've got two cats um to be able to get something to eat but you know i i knew that there was a better way to be able to do this and uh i i joined on facebook a, a pet net group when this went down they had people looking into ways to try to figure out the API and, and, and basically take over these devices. And they were asking the pet net company to, you know, maybe open source their software so that people could write their own, uh, and, and host, you know, the, 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 the server software side of things, uh, someplace else. Um, so great group of folks. And I put this information out there and, um, one of the other guys on there said, okay, well, this is great. This, points me in the right direction and um, you know Jeremy went ahead and took the same board that I did wired it differently and wired it directly to the motor 
That way he could uh, basically control how much food is coming out to his pets. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So again, out here on the blog, and I'll, I'll leave the link to this, you can do this version of it if you want to. It's a little less invasive. doesn't really mess with their hardware, and you're not really cutting wires. But, uh, you know, if you really want to get the goodness out of this, uh, that's what we're going to be talking here today uh, is, 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 again, directly wiring to that motor. And again, there's some pros and cons in doing that. But uh, let's, let's talk about what it is you're going to need in order to do this. So this is the board itself. Um, so this board, uh, again, is, uh, what are they running? $13.99 here on Amazon. Uh, you need to get the 5 volt model because this this um, you know basically runs off of 5 volts and um, you know a couple of amps. Uh, the buttons here on the front, th this button here, the one on the far right in this particular photo, don't be fooled, that doesn't actually do anything. That's for uh, doing a wireless, uh, you know, you can have a little remote control to do this thing in certain models, but they don't actually sell you that remote in this model, and that's not what we're talking about here today. We want to use the actual Wi-Fi app. So when you want to actually set this thing up and and uh, connect the device to the, the, the app, um, this is the button, the one that's here in line with the power port. Uh, that is the one that you hold down in order to initiate the pairing mode for you know setting up Wi-Fi. And uh, in the blog post, I've got instructions on how to do that as well. Uh, a, a lot of the things in the blog post are, are the things that you're going to need to know in order to, you know, set up the, the app and things like that. I'm not going to re-go over that because that's, that's all there for everybody to read. Um, but this button here also is the manual uh, relay trip. So if you want to, you know, when you first set this thing up, and you don't have that Wi-Fi set up, and you just want to make sure that you've got it all wired correctly, you just hit that button one time, and then this uh, little light here turns on to show you that the relay has tripped and, and is working. So uh, to explain the posts here on the board, you've got uh, the 5 volts, ground, uh, five volts uh, positive uh, on, on this particular post here on the, on the left. Uh, this one here is your ground, and then you've got a, a normally open, You've got a, a, a common, which is ground again, and then this is a normally closed. So the, the four posts that we're going to be using today is the normally open, the ground, and the, the five volts in the ground on this side for the power. Um, so that's the board that you're going to need to order. Um, if, again, if you don't have extra wire laying around, uh, the size of the wire inside of the PetNet feeder is actually a 20-gauge wire, so it's super tiny. Um, uh, this is 18 gauge wire. It's nice. It, it, it's big enough. It's got more, you know, uh, braids of, of the metal fiber there for you to work with. Um, and it can go hand in hand with the 20 gauge. That's fine. You're going to need some extra pieces of wire. So if you don't have any uh, line around the house to use, um, you can pick some up here as well. And this is, you know, $7. Uh, and because that wire is so small on the inside of this thing, uh, what I recommend is is uh, a pair of actual legitimate wire uh, strippers. Uh, and as you can see here, 18 gauge is what I recommended to purchase as the additional wire that you're going to need. Uh, but the wires inside of the PetNet device are, you can see it's 20 gauge right there, which is, you know, uh, 0 0.8 millimeter. It's, it's tiny. Uh, so only a couple of strands inside of that thing. So you're going to need that. Um, and then uh, let's talk about power. So wiring directly to the motor, you are bypassing all of the electronics from the PetNet folks to include their battery, right? So it, when uh, the PetNet device actually comes with, you know, this little, you know, wall wart thing here, uh, which is uh, five volts and, and one amp. And when you wire directly to the motor with this device that we're talking about here and, and, and going with this, you know, Wi-Fi device, uh, it's, it's not enough amps to, to run the motor correctly. So one of the things that you can do is, is the, you know, the wire that came with the device and uh, you can unplug it from this one. And if you have, you know, say one of these Apple plugs for an iPad uh, just lying around or and you don't mind dedicating it to this use, this thing has enough power that you can use it. But I need mine for my um, iPad. So I actually 
had gone online the week before and had bought this universal power supply. And, uh, you know, just lo and behold, all of these different uh, options and tips that it comes with, this is perfect. So, you know, if you're the hobby person and you want to drill in and, and you know, uh, use wires and, and this one here, um, you know, have at it. Uh, all I did was was use this one here, which is the, the uh, uh, micro USB, which is what it already needs. Uh, so to set this thing up, you take this little key here, uh, and this key fits right here in, in this uh, plastic slot. And then you just dial that arrow over here to the 5 volt setting, and this thing automatically puts out enough amps to be able to run the motor correctly. Now it's a tight fit getting it into the, the area where the cable normally goes into uh, inside of the PetNet feeder, uh, but with um, you know a little finagling, you can you can shove it in there and and uh, like I said, you've got other options. You can drill out that area and and you know run it through. There's there's several different things you can do, but uh, again, I just hooked it up directly. Bottom line, you're going to need um, you know more power to be able to run this. And I'd be remiss if I didn't actually mention. Uh, for my particular cats, we use this uh, Rachel Ray Nutrish, uh, and it is a very small kibble, uh, which works well for them, and it works particularly well with uh, this particular feeder. Uh, the the gears and the the system. If you use you know too big of a, of a of a pet food, you get less of it coming out per rotation, that sort of thing. So uh, the smaller it is, the better. And uh, my cats actually like this; good for their stomachs. Uh, kept some, uh, keeps them really uh, well fed, so figured I'd just throw that out there as well. Um, so let's talk about uh, a little bit here the pros and cons of um, you know using this system. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons of doing this. Uh, first, uh, you know here in the pros column, um, you're not going to have to deal with the PetNet folks uh, ever again, right? Uh, you're not going to have to pay that $30 yearly subscription that they're going to ask you for now. Um, you can continue to use the feeder. You don't have to buy another one. That's a good pro. Uh, less e-waste than a landfill because, uh, you know, I know some people are going to get fed up with this and they're just going to chuck these things out. So I think that's a good thing. I'll throw it in the pro column here. Uh, and also, if you happen to buy a secondhand device, um, you know, be on the lookout for these again at, at uh, you know, Goodwill and eBay. You know, drive the prices down for these things, you know, purchase them, do this modification to them. And again, you never have to deal with uh, the pet net folks again, but you still get to use the hardware, which I actually do. It's, it's well designed, right? Uh, on the con side, you don't get battery backup any longer. The battery backup and all of the internals, uh, you know, from the, the pet net device, um, you're not using them anymore after you do this, right? Um, so that that uh, manual snack button that that is up front, that is also disabled. Uh, so you won't be able to do that. And then uh, again, we already addressed the new power supply that you're going to need. Um, and then uh, you know all of the goodness of their app. You know it's very specific to your pet. It's got a cutesy little picture of them. You know if you do that. Uh, plus you can set at different times uh, different amounts of feed. Uh, well, unfortunately, you know, you're not going to have that. You, you will have the ability to control how much is coming out. But once you've set that, that's what comes out at each of the scheduled times. Um, so, again, pros and cons here. You'll get functionality out of the device, but it won't be as slick as the different things that you are going to be able to do with the PetNet app, uh, unfortunately. But, again, so long as you're okay with doing that and uh, you're okay with, uh, some basic electronics you can you can you know use some screwdrivers and uh, some wire snips uh, and you're willing to accept the responsibility because I don't if you choose to do this this is on you um, if you're willing to do that you know let's move on and um, you know uh, show you a video of how to take the device apart first okay let's go here to the video and let's start that up. So I have to excuse my very cluttered desk, but um, this is my generation one pet feeder, right? Uh, so that button down there is what releases the food tray. 
And again, all of the electronics for the PetNet system are in there. That little button that I just touched there turns off their electronics, and you never have to touch it again. Um, yep, that's the tray, the food tray. You can clean it separately. Put that aside. And for those of you that haven't broken down your PetNet feeder before, um, this is this is how you take the hopper off. And you, you may have remember doing this from setting the thing up, but you take the lid off, you twist it uh, to get that out of there. Uh, and then what I found the easiest to do is to flip the unit over and you've got those uh, four little uh, indentations. Um, you can stick a screwdriver in there and just, you know, uh, press out to the side and up a little bit with the screwdriver tip. And you can see that one's popped. And as soon as I do this side over here, the whole unit just pops out of there. Uh, and then if you carefully pull it, there are some wires on the inside that's going to sensors and, and things like that. And you don't actually, um, you know, you won't be using any of that before. But, you know, if you want to leave it there for the, the next person or if you ever want to do a different tweak to it or decide to go back to the pet net folks, um, you know, you can rewire this back. But what I'm showing you there is I've clipped two sets of wires. One is the power that's coming in in that um, this this. Basically, this little section right here is where that power cord is coming in, and these are the two wires that, that, that uh, come from the power. I snipped them. I believe they are those right there. And then I also snipped the, the second one there with the yellow connector. And those um, are the wires that went up to the motor. And uh, we'll go over that in some pictures here a little bit more in depth, but basically just wanted you guys to know how to uh, get this thing apart and back together again with this video. When you put it together, again, you just make sure none of those wires are sticking out in any of the edges, um, and that's it. I mean, it's it's pretty simple to, to get in and out of this thing um, uh, relatively quickly. So if you've got any questions on that, you can uh, hop into my forums. If you want to chat about this, you've got any questions, let me know. Um, that's a good good place to start. All right, so let's uh, let's see here. Let's go back to our pictures. So um, this picture is, is um, almost all you need to know uh, when it comes to this device. Uh, this is facing the back side of it. Again, this little bump right here is the indentation where the power cord comes in. And uh, this is the little circuit board where the uh, normal you know, micro USB cord uh, hooks up uh, on the other side of this. Uh, so again, if, you, if you're interested in that universal power supply, and uh, you don't mind, you know, drilling a hole if you're, you're you wanted to, to do that. You can use several of those other tips if you wanted to uh, and have the wires. You can use the one that has the wiring post very much like is on the board here if you felt like it. Um, very possible. Um, if you're going to cut them, um, cut them closer here uh, to the, uh, you know, where the connectors are on the board. That gives you the most amount of wire to be able to play with. If I had done that here, this whole board kind of could fit down in this slot, um, you know, but th this thing doesn't move all that much, so it can sit there by itself um, and be perfectly fine. So uh, let's look at uh, the, the circuit that you're going to need here. You can see the two wires coming off of the motor. Now, normally those, uh, you might be able to see a little bit right here in this photo, some of the red. These wires are normally stuck together. Uh, but they're separated up here at the top. So you can actually just kind of, you know, put your uh, uh, fingers in there, get a fingernail, get something in there, and just separate the wires all the way down to, to where you cut them. So the red wire, you know, the, 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 the hot wire, if you will, comes to this first post here, uh, the NO or normally open. You're going to need uh, here from the ground wire uh, to the positive 5 volts, you're going to need this little loop wire. So this is where that extra wire that you need to either have on hand or purchase uh, is going to come in handy. Um, and again, unfortunately, uh, if you don't find it, you, you're only going to need a very small length of that wire. And, and on Amazon, they don't sell it that small. So you either find it or you got to buy it. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the kind of the complicated bit for the um, uh, power portion of things. The ground wire from the motor has to come in here to the ground post along with the ground wire from the, the, the incoming power. And then the incoming um, 5 volts 
wire comes into the 5 volts post along with this loop wire that brings it around here to uh, the ground on the relay side of things. Um, but that's it. Um, that is, is, you know, doesn't get any simpler than that. You, you, that's, that's how you wire it up. Um, and again, so long as you're using that other power module, you're going to, you know, be powering it correctly in, in order for it to, uh, uh, you know, survive clicking on the relay and, and manually driving that motor for an extended period of time. What I found is, is if I try to use the crimps from the other uh, fix where I just made, you know, had the, the blog post and it was just for about hitting the button, if I use those, it didn't bring enough of the power over. So this is the only way I could actually get this to work is to use the original wires and, and wire them directly to those power posts. Um, so, you know, this, this uh, again, you can follow the blog post. Uh, and the instructions on how to uh, set up the eWe Link app. Um, one word of advice there: uh, this is definitely a, a, you know Chinese servers and systems. So please, uh, good cyber hygiene here. Don't reuse a password that you have used on any other website. It's going to go into somebody's database in China, and you don't know what they're going to do with it. Um, so just a word of warning: please make up something new and different. Uh, uh, just just so that nobody else has access to any of these other websites that you might want to get into. Um, so again, uh, here on my socials, uh, alanscloud.com, that'll actually bring you to my WordPress site, and that very latest blog uh, will be the one from, from uh, the 4th, uh, with that first option and some of that other information. Um, my forum there, that's relatively new. Some people are having problems getting to it. Uh, but, you know, if that's the case, uh, Twitter uh, and uh, Facebook as well. Uh, drop me a line, connect somehow, um, you know, find me out there on the, the, the PetNet users uh, group uh, or, or on my uh, Facebook page as well. And let me know what you think. Um, I, again, I am not planning on paying PetNet any more money than I absolutely have to. And I hope that you guys don't either. So uh, with that said, everybody have a good one.